Well, it's time to install the cooling system on this KLR. I should probably be doing the wiring harness next, but since I'm so good at procrastinating, I felt like I should just go ahead and do the cooling system since the wiring harness is a big mess and I really just don't want to mess with it right now. So as you can see, I took everything apart so I could clean everything properly. I repainted all the things that you see that are black. This radiator is not in the best shape, but there's no leaks or anything, so I'm going to continue to use it and see if it gives me any troubles. The fan was quite dirty, so I had to soak it in some Einsol for a few days and that seemed to work out well. With the radiator and fan assembly put together, I move on to this reservoir or overflow tank bracket. This thing houses, of course, the tank, but first we need to reinstall the horn assembly. And this was a little bit trickier than I expected to install just because there's a certain way those little metal pieces have to go into the grommet. If you're wondering how I got this tank so clean, it's because I didn't clean it, it's a new one. It came with a bike. And so I'm definitely going to use that as the other one looked pretty cruddy, although I'm sure it would have worked fine. As you'll see in the next video, I really, really should have done the wiring harness first, since the wiring harness goes up and under all these pieces. But I was able to get it on without taking too many pieces off. But if you are following this video, I would suggest actually doing the wiring harness first. Had I posted that video first, it wouldn't have made sense, though, because you would have seen all these parts already installed. While installing this bracket, don't forget to install the little clamp that holds the clutch cable in place. That is important or otherwise the clutch cable will just be all over the place. There's also no need to install the shroud at this point as you'll have to take it off to um, fill the system with coolant. But of course I wasn't thinking about that so I went ahead and put it on. Thankfully it's just two screws to take it off so it's not that big of a deal. I did recoat this shroud with the same Rust-Oleum uh, bed liner spray that I used on some of the other parts and it turned out real nice. Also here's another tip. It's probably actually easier to install the radio to the bike first and then install the fan. But you can access it, you just need a long extension as you see here because the screw lives behind the fan, so accessing it is a little bit tricky, uh, but it is doable. Now to install the overflow hose, this will hook up to the bottom side of the reservoir tank on the other side of the bike. With all these pieces in place, I can turn my attention to installing the Thermobob kit. The kit comes with everything you see here except this inlet, which is part of the KLR. Um, I just tried to paint it to match this color here. It comes with this tube, which is a bypass tube, a seal to seal against the uh, head of the engine, as well as a thermostat and an extra thermostat. So the Thermobob kit's job is really not to keep the KLR cooler is to make it more uniform as far as temperature goes. If the uh, cylinder gets really cold and then hot, it can cause it to warp and become egg-shaped and you'll get uh, premature ring failure. So we go ahead and install the seal against uh, the jug of the KLR and tighten down these three bolts. Inside of this housing is of course the thermostat. There's a little dot on the bottom of the thermostat. You need to make sure that's pointed down. And when you're tightening these uh, three bolts up, go in a pattern, only tightening maybe one or a half turn each time. Otherwise you risk cracking the cylinder casting. So I'm installing the bypass hose here, but I'll need to take that back off actually and reinstall it in a different way later on in the video. But I can go ahead and install this radiator hose that connects to the inlet here and to the top of the radiator. Also, although it's a small detail, be sure to go ahead and install the hose clamps loosely onto the radiator hose. 
That'll make everything a lot easier. If you don't, then you'll either have to take the hose back off or open up the hose clamp all the way, which is never a good idea in my opinion. So now we need to install the outlet hose of the radiator. But before we do that, we need to install this port. This is what allows the thermobob to do its job by bypassing some of the coolant uh, from the radiator. So the instruction said to mark it down on this tube an inch and a quarter or 32 millimeters, and then make another mark referenced off of that mark another 5 eighths of an inch or 16 millimeters. We can simply cut this up with a pair of scissors, making sure to keep track of the hoses properly, and go ahead and install this bypass port with a couple of hose clamps. So with that done, I have one more thing to add to this hose, and that is the thermocouple or temperature sensor for the Trailtech Vapor digital gauge that I'll be using to replace the stock uh, gauge cluster. I'll be doing a separate full video on this Trailtech, so stay tuned for that. So I'm not going to give too much details other than realizing that this needs to be installed now or else I'd have to take the whole coolant system back apart. So before I can install this, I actually need to figure out where it needs to sit on this tube. So I'm going to dry mock this up on the bike and I've done that here and I've made some marks where I think it needs to go. But actually I've learned something else that I need to clock this connector about 90 degrees um, in the opposite direction to make it possible for this tube to have a direct path to the um, thermal bob. So I've made a mark where I want this to sit. So now I just need to do the same thing, cut a piece of this tubing out and install it with a couple of hose clamps. So this is the end result. Now I just need to take this over and install it on the bike. With it in place, I just need to clamp it to the water pump here to the bottom of the radiator and reinstall the bypass hose back onto the thermobob, which I'm doing here. So with this tube installed, that'll wrap up the cooling system. It is pretty easy to install, although I found out right after making the video that I had a set of silicon tubes that came with a bike and I didn't even realize it. So I had to redo a lot of this work. That's why the tubing here looks different. And I will say the silicone hoses are definitely nicer and easier to work with. Anyway, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And please, if you like these um, videos in this series, let me know by liking the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching and have fun wrenching and even more fun riding. Stay safe.